Okay, so ladies and gents, I am on the ski road that comes from this main gondola lift station, and it takes you all the way back down to the village of Bansko, which is really cool. Uh, by the way, that's actually how skiing originated, was as a, a way for people like in the Alps, predominantly in the mountains generally, to get from one village to the next. And uh, skiing was an efficient way of doing this, and of course it didn't become a sport until much later. But anyhow, I'm going to record as much of this little trip down there as I can. Uh, it's beautiful. There's a little creek that runs through it and everything. And uh, so as long as the, the memory on my iPhone holds up, I'll uh, be able to give you guys a glimpse of it. And uh, you're going to have to bear with me. It's going to be a little shaky because i got to put my glove back on and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, just bear with me. Ski poles are handy. Apparently, you can actually set your phone on it, and if you do it right, you can balance it. Super cool. It kind of sucks that you can't work these things with gloves. Well, correction, you can't work them uh, with these gloves. But, you know. It is what it is. So now we're going to be here on the ski road. And you guys can just kind of see this. This is a nice, uh, a nice easy ski. It's nothing uh, it's real difficult or anything. It's not even really considered uh, a ski run. It's not considered a ski slope. It's actually listed on the map as ski road because that's exactly what it is. It's, it's just enough of a, a downhill slope that you're not having to use your poles to push yourself the whole time. But it's not so so sheer as that you're gonna get up you know, an unsafe amount of speed that you shouldn't be able to control. And really, technically, you should always be able to control everything. You know, that's kind of rule number one. If you're not, if you can't control your speed, then stick to the easier slopes. I ran the Tomba run again twice today, and it was actually quite difficult, but it gave me a lot of confidence because a lot of the powder has turned into like this hard packed ice. So it's basically like a wall of ice that's straight down with little pockets of powder mixed in it. And those of you who ski know how weird it can be to go from hard ice to soft powder because that powder it gives you better traction, but the way you dig into the ice is different than the way you dig into the powder. So if all of a sudden you're getting all this traction on a really steep downhill slope, that can almost be kind of dangerous because A, you're not really expecting it, and B, it, it can just kind of mess you off a little bit. And that was ice back there. This is powder that I'm on now. So, you know, yeah. It's an efficient way of getting there. You can, you know, you can get a, a little bit of speed coming down here, you know, 35, 40 kilometers an hour maybe you can get. But again, it's a ski road, so you really shouldn't be going that fast on here because you're gonna have guys like this that are gonna wipe out even on the ski road to bust their ass. So you uh, want to be over. And that kind of stuff is just gonna happen. We're going to get to see this beautiful little creek here in just a minute. better view of it up here later.
said, you know, you can get out a little bit of speed, but like the old saying goes, just because you can do something, because the problem with the ski road is everybody uses it. Experienced skiers, experienced snowboarders, and guys that this is their very first day ever doing it in their life. So it's, uh, it's something to, to be careful with. And that is the view. You guys can't tell me that that's not European skiing in some experience when you look at that. It's just so tranquil and serene. And next to spending it with my family, I can't think of, if I'm going to be by myself, I can't think of a better way to spend Christmas Day than looking at this. I, just, I can't think of a better way to spend Christmas Day than looking at that. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's just truly beautiful. traffic there's no real good reason not to honestly if you like to go fast no you like to go fast so you just got to be cognizant of the other people that are out here and, and their ability levels and, and what they're doing and i'm not trying to talk like i'm some professional because i'm not I mean, you know i'm not i'm not perfect i'm not some world-class skier but i can definitely hold my own i am still here in Cleveland Tom, but you know I, um, there's some people here that come in and, Just a second. There you go, bro. <laughs> Hang on a sec. I'm coming down. Sir. Thank you, mate. Yeah, man, y'all have a Merry Christmas. You too. <sighs> for those of you that don't know, you always yield to anybody that's downhill from you. If they're downhill, they have the right of way. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't always look uphill before you start going again because you never know when some dumbass is not going to be paying attention. Or if they're new and they don't know the rules. So you always want to be careful. It's, it's ultimately on you to take care of your own safety when you do this. Uh, you know, the rules are in place for safety, but that does not mean everyone can follow. And I'm going to check out this right here also. Well, maybe not too much traffic going across that bridge. I'll stop at the next one. You guys can see that. powder that I'm on now. It's just enough powder to give you a little traction to control with just enough ice to make it a little bit faster than you would normally want it to do. The sound you hear is the ice. That sound you hear is power.
I would get one of those stabilized mounts for my phone, but I just can't see them being worth $300. Somebody wants to donate one, I'll gladly take it. down, you know, really up in it, but, you know, I mean, on this, you can kind of sit back on your haunches and just kind of ride and just cut a little bit back and forth to control your speed. That's really all you have to do. You know what I mean? I'm not even using my poles. I'm, I'm not even needing them for this. It's, it's a nice, it's a hill to kind of just run, run, run it, you know. And now that there's no traffic, it's just like going off a little bit of speed. Bansko, Bulgaria is truly a beautiful place. It's a, Bulgaria is a beautiful country, and Bansko is a really beautiful part of it. For those of you who have always wanted to, you know, quote unquote, ski in Europe somewhere, but you don't want to go to Chamonix or Mont Blanc or Saint Moritz or Saint Anton or Innsbruck or uh, you know any, any of those Long Albers, any of those places. Uh, you know, you, you don't want to go um, to Western Europe and spend all that money. We come over here in the Balkans and we can have a great time. It's just a lot cheaper. A lot of people say up on the slopes in, like, France, for instance, up on the slopes a beer is going to cost you 10 euros. Even down in town, it's going to cost you 7. Up here, a beer costs you 8 Bulgarian left, like good beer, like the Hogarden. You can get a giant Stella up on the slopes from like six Bulgarian low, which is about what it is down in town. And, um, you know, the exchange rate is 1.75 for U.S. dollars right now. So basically, one dollar is worth 1.75 Bulgarian low. So your money goes a long way here. I mean, that, like I said, that, uh, that, that eight left hoe garden, is about four dollars, four twenty-five, something like that. Um, you know, and you know that's any kind of resort town or you know a bar. You're gonna pay that for something like a hood garden, especially. You're gonna pay that. Um, and so, given that this is a vacation destination, it's it's really quite reasonable. Um, you know, because you you want to have your wits about your skiing. You might have one, you know, with lunch or something like that, but you're not. You know, you're, you're, you're saving that for the after the ski. Uh, and the nightlife in Vansko is legendary. There's a great uh, after a ski scene here, or after ski scene here. And uh, I will tell you that Vansko is, I mean, you see, you know, a lot of kids, they, they got a, they call, it, they call it a skinder garden, which is like a ski school for kids. But Vansko is very grown up. It's not, it's not for children. It's kind of like the Vegas of the Balkans. There are a lot of um, adult clubs here. There are a lot of casinos. There are a lot of things that, just based on the signs, you may not want your kids asking questions about when you're going down the street. Here. Yeah, so yeah, just be be mindful that you know it's it's uh, you know it can be family oriented here, but just by nature. You know, Basco is for growing up. This is, this is a very adult place. It's not for kids. Um, that doesn't mean you can't bring your family and your kids won't have a good time here. But, um, you know, for instance, I mean, look at this little kid right here. His little kid right here probably skis better than I do if they do this. So, you know, I mean, the, you know it, it 
can be parent friendly, but I personally would not bring my small children there. Now, if you have teenage children that already know what things like an erotic show is and all that, you know, then, you know if they already kind of know if they're not, you know, little little kids anymore, then you know, by all means, uh, you know, great. I'm not a view. Look at that. Now, this is one of those things that I just have to stop and appreciate.